Hey, I'm Sheila with Hall's Tools, also known as Mama Hall's. Fall is one of my favorite seasons in the garden. I think I like fall better than spring. So it's time to get these raised beds all cleaned up and ready for my fall planting. I'm just gonna do one today. In this bed, I wanna get it ready for some carrots. But first we need to clean it up, get all that old plant debris out of there. I've got some sunflowers in here. I'm gonna pull up, get rid of the weeds, and then we're gonna take care of the soil. We need to ensure we're starting with good, healthy, productive soil that's got a lot of organic matter, feed those microbes um, to ensure we have those healthy plants for the fall. This is pretty good soil. It's rich, it's soft, it's crumbly. It looks very healthy, but I'm still gonna amend it. Um, this is where I'm gonna plant my carrots. Since carrots is going in this bed, I want to make sure that there's no debris that's gonna impede that carrot's growth. So any sticks, any rocks, you need to make sure that they're, the bed is clear of them. This is one of my worm beds, and I'm gonna get some worm castings to go down in the raised beds to get them ready for fall. I keep them covered with some cardboard or paper and try to keep that moist. I just take the top layer and some of the worms will be in there and I put about this much in each of my four by eight raised beds. Next is some of our compost. And we get this, it's called black gold cotton compost. And we get this from a place that's uh, local to our area. So now that I've got it cleaned out, I'm ready to amend this bed to get it ready for my carrots. And as you saw earlier, I went and gathered some worm castings. And this has some paper in it that I feed the worms. That's okay. And there's even a few worms in here and that's okay too. So in this four by eight bed, I'll put a basket of worm castings. Then you also saw the compost that we use. It's black gold cotton gin compost. And we've had this sitting out there for about two years. We just go and get a truckload as we need it. And it is just awesome. The last thing that I'm gonna use is the complete organic fertilizer. This is 100% all natural composted chicken manure. And in this bed, I'm gonna put three of these solo cups. And what's good about this is it kind of feeds the plants over time. So you get this long-term benefit from it. It's not just a boost immediately. It works the whole time your plants are in there with a slow release. After each amendment, I'll mix in, and I use this um, push-pull hoe from Haas. It is an excellent tool 
for your raised beds. Next, we're gonna add our worm compost. Our worm castings, whatever you prefer to call it. And let's mix that in. And then last, our compost. Next, I'm just gonna take my rake and rake this bed down. Level it up. And it is about, it's early September and I wanna plant these carrots in about two weeks. So the ideal time to get your beds ready is about two weeks before planting, if at all possible. So I'm just gonna rake this bed. And then I may get some cardboard or a piece of plastic and cover it up until it's ready for me to plant. So there you have it. We have this raised bed ready for planting. I'll do the same to these four by eight plots of sunflowers once they finish blooming and we'll be ready for fall. Now sit back and relax while I take you on a tour of my friend, neighbor, customer's garden as we plant some fall vegetables. See you next time. Hey y'all, let me show you my garden. Well, first I want you to meet our security guard. He takes care of the garden. His name is JJ. Okay. So right here I, is raised bed number one. Um, we just pulled the peppers up. We had uh, baby bell peppers. And we're gonna go back with the eight ball squash in um, this raised bed. All right, right here we got <clears throat> raised bed number two. It's a lot larger, um, and we got a few little sunflowers on each side. And what we're gonna do is we pulled up zinnias from, from this area, and we're gonna go back with the one ball squash, which is one of my favorite. Now last year, this is where I had the um, ball squash at. So I think we pulled it up, so I'm gonna go back with the cue ball squash in this area. I'm over to bed number four, and we actually had bell peppers and um, banana peppers in this area. So we're gonna go back with, uh, I think we wanna do the eight ball squash here. So first we're gonna water in the dirt before we plant our seeds. And this is just preference. You can water it in or you can plant it and then water. And Valerie, what kind of um, soil do we have in here? Uh, this is a mixture of uh, compost that we um, mixed up and it has, it's been sitting in the back for a little while now. And this is the same thing you planted your other squash in that it did it, real well? It is, yes, it sure is. And this is Hank, he's the garden dog. Hey Hank. Hank, tell him hey. He patrols the garden, keeps any of the pest out. We're just gonna take my little- a Half an inch deep. Mm -hmm. take and my... about five to six inches apart. It's about the length of your hand between. You don't want to plant them too deep. Now 
Nance is already coming out, I guess she was. I was thinking we had one over here, but maybe that leaf out of the way. We got one right there. So these one ball that you planted last year, where you planting right here? How many different ways did you cook them? Uh, Sheila, I think must have been about probably three or four different ways. Uh. What was your favorite way? I think my favorite way was the kielbasa. Use the kielbasa sausage, and then uh, cut your uh, cut your squash up, and maybe even a little onion. And I tell you, it does real good in the Dutch oven. And you put it in the Dutch oven and put it in the oven. Ah, about 375, 400, according to how long you want to cook it. But it is a fast meal. You can cut them all up and put them in there. And uh, add whatever seasonings you want now. We got some pretty good seasonings. And uh, stick it in the oven, you ain't even got to worry about it. About 25, 30 minutes later, check it. It's good. You put Parmesan on it? I did, I did. Um, of course, you know, I put the Parmesan on after we scooped it up, and then I like the Parmesan at the end. So did you put any up to preserve them? I did. I, uh, you know, I thought about stewing them or just blanching them, you know, till they were almost done, and, and then found out about the uh, flash freeze and decided to do that, and that was awesome. So you just put them on a cookie sheet, you know, slice them up, Kind of like you would a tomato, and uh, put them, don't stack them, just line them up on the cookie sheet and put them in the freezer. Now, I found mine wasn't quite ready after two hours, so I let them stay in there three hours and uh, pulled them out, and they were ready. And all I did was I put them in a vacuum seal freezer bag. Uh, vacuumed and sealed it and put it in the freezer and they are just as beautiful and yellow as they was the day I put them in there and I will tell you I went ahead the other day took one of them out a sack of them out and oh they were just like they come off just like they come off the plant and it was so good so you put them on a cookie sheet flash froze them mm -hmm. like in a single layer for about two to three hours. Then you put them in a vacuum seal bag and so they stay separated. Um, actually, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Like when you took them out of the freezer, yep, stayed separated. Yes, it, it was so wonderful. Much easier than trying to blanch and all that kind of stuff to put them up. And they taste pretty fresh? Oh yeah, they were awesome. Just water it in lightly so those seeds get wet. So. They're in contact with the soil and they're wet. It's just mainly what you want to do. 